Okay, so good morning everyone. Today we continue with our Radiology Journal Club presentations. Today with Dr. Hanna, she will talk to us about a very, very interesting subject which we may have some cases here and there and we might miss every now and then. It's the findings in patients with eating disorders, the people with anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, I don't know what, binge eating, other, a lot of uh, uh, eating disorders that unfortunately most of them they are not recognized or they hide it because of the social stigma, you know, they are crazy, they are, it's not they are crazy, it's a disease and we have to be a part of the diagnosis and, some, and actually sometimes we are the only thing that can discover that this patient has this uh, problem. So Dr. Hanna will talk to us about it and let's have fun. Uh, good morning everyone, I am Dr. Hanna Adna from the Arabic world. I am pleased today to present you two topics about uh, the radiology of eating disorders. Um, first of all, we want to know what is eating disorders. Uh, and actually they are a spectrum of disorders. Essentially they are abnormality of body images. It is a spectrum, so it is not just only one disease. And it is, as Dr. Ahmed said, it's a challenging uh, topic because uh, most of the cases are easily missed and they have high morbidity if they have delayed diagnosis. So as radiologists, we should have a high index of suspicion in order to point the early uh, manifestations and the early uh, uh, diagnostic features of these uh, disorders. So uh, to classify and define eating disorders, they are mainly classified into four uh, diseases. First of all is anorexia nervosa. Anorexia nervosa patients have an abnormality of body image, have, uh, is, uh, have a body image of being fat or uh, gaining fat despite being underweight. And they have a, a severe fear of, uh, of gaining weight. While bulimia nervosa, they have uh, an attack of binge eating followed, uh, of course, they have lack of control. And after this effects of binge eating, they have a, a compensatory mechanism to avoid weight gain. So they eat a lot of food in a short period of time. Then they have compensatory mechanisms in form of induced emesis or use of cathartics or diuretics or even excessive exercise. The third part, eating disorders not otherwise specified, means that disorders have overlapped features of both uh, these disorders. And finally, polyca, which is a persistent uh, consumption of non-nutritive material for more than one month. So basically, it is a spectrum, but when we talk about them, we talk in general, because they, are, they have systemic effect on different body organ systems. So as we mentioned, they have systemic manifestation. We will discuss the effect of eating disorders on each body organ systems and their clues for diagnosis for us as radiologists. Starting from the musculoskeletal system, what are the effects of these disorders on the uh, musculoskeletal system? They will suffer from various uh, effects. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, each of them. So we have two sagittal MRI. Can you please tell CT me, scan, uh, yeah. a CT scan, uh, what is the normal CT scan and what is the abnormal CT scan and why? Yeah. Which one is the normal and which one is the abnormal? Yeah. Yes, left, uh, left side is normal, or right side for me is normal. Uh, this one is uh, abnormal. It shows normal vertebral alignment and normal vertebral uh, bony density. While in this CT, we know that there is loss of vertebral height, crush multiple, multiple level crush fractures involving the dorsal spine, in addition to the obvious reduction of the bone density. So this is a patient with anorexia nervosa suffering from osteoporosis. DEXA scan was done for him, it was uh, less than 0.2 uh, uh, in minus. Less than well, two minus two, two standard Yes, less than two uh, minus two standard deviation. Well, this is a young age patient with a minor shoulder trauma present with a shoulder pain. So for the first attempt, yes, he has an uh, undisplaced oblique fracture involving the lateral clavicle. But as radiologists, we should look more than the fracture. We should look at the trabecular configuration and also about the cortical thickness. We know that there is cortical thinning, and this is what's called pseudo-permeative pattern of the bony trabeculation. So he has osteopenia. So why this young age patient is developing osteopenia? This is what will lead us to doing DEXA and diagnose osteopenia. And this is why 
Here we developed pathological fractures for a trivial trauma. Here's another example. In this case, it is more obvious that the patient has osteopenia. There's a large reduction in the bone density. Uh, it is placed uh, a fracture of the uh, surgical neck of the humerus with a poor callus formation. Again, we should look more than this. We should look at the muscle bulk. He has a loss of the uh, uh, small muscle bulk in comparison to the normal individual. Further fractures uh, of pathological uh, part because insufficient fracture involving distal fibula and this again involving the uh, lower dorsal spine, crushed fracture with a generalized reduction in bone density. Yes, uh, these patients, as I mentioned, they have compensatory mechanism. They eat and regret and try to compensate for eating by what? Some do vomiting, some by diuretic or uh, cathartic, some do excessive exercise. These excessive exercise and weight feeding, and for example, in this patient presented with severe lower back pain. A clean a pelvic x-ray was normal. There is no any obvious abnormality involving the pelvic girdle. But because of the severe pain, she underwent bone scan. Here the bone scan revealed excessive uptake of both, of both sacroiliac joints that was due to stress fracture that is not obvious on plain radiography. Uh, you know what this sign called? The insufficiency fracture taking radioactive uh, radio, I mean radionuclide in the bone scan has a very very famous name. A donut. Super. It's called Honda sign. Honda. Honda. Mm -hmm. It's just like the letter H from the Honda the car. H. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It indicates Honda. 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 H. H. Okay. Okay. Do you know what it, uh, it's a sign for insufficiency fracture that are detected by the bone scan? Thank you. Um, some patients, of course, with again with the uh, excessive exercise, will gonna have fractures and refractures of the pelvic girdle. For example, this patient has this lesion involving the right pubic ramus. It is a strange lesion that was first thought to be a neoplastic lesion or even an infectious, for example, a case of osteomyelitis. But uh, in this view, the fracture line is obvious. So this is due to acute on chronic fracture, a repeated fracture due to repeated trauma to the pelvic girdle. Well, another effect on the musculoskeletal system is bone marrow conversion. So again, by neglecting what's written, which one is the normal and which one is the abnormal? Which one is normal? In a healthy age patient? A or B? B is, well, uh, A. A. Yes, A is a controlled normal subject with a uh, compared age, A and B. But in A, we know that density of the vertebral body. Vertebral body mainly uh, composed of red marrow. So it is this normal signal and density. Why are this patient with severe anorexia nervosa? There is fatty conversion of the bone marrow. Means that the red marrow and the vertebral body became fat. And this is why it gave a high signal intensity in T1 weighted images. Again, another thing of note, look at the subcutaneous fat thickness in normal individual and look at this patient and eating disorder. So there is what's called a fatty conversion of the bone marrow. Again, the, the, this uh, point is to be uh, repeated again and again. We should look further. This patient presents with uh, chronic attacks of abdominal pain. Plain abdominal film done for her. Her age is 31 years old. 31 years old. Okay, there is nothing conclusive as a bowel pattern or anything else, but they noted that she has unfused uh, sacral iliac apophysis. She's 31 years old. It's too late for her. So she has what? She has delayed bone maturity. So delayed bone maturity together with this vague recurrent attacks of, the, of abdominal pain uh, led to the uh, diagnosis of the hidden eating disorder. Usually at which age this apophysis is used? Uh, about 18, uh, 17 to 18 17, years 18 old. years old. She's 30. 31 and years still old. still not fused. So why? Because she has eating disorder. Of course, yes. they have psychiatric disorder, so they don't uh, claim your, their cells. They don't say, I, am, uh, I'm, I have induced vomiting or I, I have fear of uh, gaining weight. 
Well, the second body organ system is the gastrointestinal system. Again, multiple changes and uh, that we should uh, be aware of. Um, which one is the normal regarding the parotid gland? Yeah, but which one? Parotid, high normal or high normal? A I or B? Uh, sorry? Maybe, maybe B as a normal. Normal normal? Yes. <laughs> yes, B is the normal. B is the normal. B is the normal. B is the normal. This is the uh, normal signal intensity of the parotid gland. In A, patient with bulimia nervosa. Repeated vomiting means repeated stimulation, acidity in the, in the mouth will cause a repeated and chronic salivary gland stimulation. This will result in hypertrophy and increased signal intensity of the protein glands. Yeah, he's uh -huh. losing weight, just, just to see uh -huh. if you can go back. Yes. He's losing weight. So the fat in the gland is also absorbed by the body. Yes. It's certain that his body absorbs even the fat in the parotid gland. When there's no fat, the gland will be dense, will show increased density. And for some uh, 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 vasomotor stimulation and the vagal and something like things like that, it will become edematous. So it will become hypertrophied. Or could it body atrophied? That's the part of it, so hypertrophied. It doesn't matter. And different patients. These are two different patients. Not the patients. same patients. This, this is not the same patient. No, no, not the same patient. No, 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 it's not the same. Two different conditions. Yeah, two different. Just for just comparison. to compare the parotid gland. This is gland. abnormal appearance. Dense parotid gland, hypertrophied gland. Well, this normal parotid gland containing fat. Yes. Um, which diagnosis do you suspect? SMA. Yes, SMA syndrome is also uh, a missed diagnosis in these patients. Uh, present with repeated attacks of vomiting. In a patient with uh, in thin patients, we should keep this diagnosis in our mind. You know that the severe mesenteric artery arises from the aorta at an angle. At this angle between the SMA and aorta, there are no no many things, just the left renal vein, fat, and the third part of duodenum. So, in a fat depleted individuals, if this mesenteric fat is depleted, what will happen? The SMA will compress against the aorta, squeezing the third part of duodenum with it resulting in a form of aortic obstruction and duodenal obstruction resulting in chronic vomiting. Interestingly, vomiting in these individuals are partially relieved by lying on the lateral side or bending forward. First, this will relieve the pressure over the duodenum. Diagnosis of SMA is by measuring the, uh, SM, the uh, aortic mesenteric angle, which should less, not, not be less than 25 degrees, and the aortic mesenteric distance, which should not be less than 8 mm. So normal distance is uh, more than 8 mm, and normal angle is uh, 25 to 45 degrees. If less than that, this, we should suspect SMA syndrome. Just a small comment. Any case, any case that comes to you <coughs> to execute SMA syndrome, look at the subcutaneous fat. <coughs> you cannot have patients with SMA syndrome with fat. <coughs> They are all very, 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 very thin, okay? Sometimes they send patients to exclude this and they send them, the patient is overweight. It doesn't need even to do the CT or the ultrasound. It's overweight, it's, it's heavy. It's not the same, definitely, okay? But yeah, in the north, in the EG, SMA and the fat. No, 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 Love. Mm. Uh, another uh, abnormality in patients with binge eating. This patient had ate four packs of semi-cooked pasta, so he had got acute gastric dilatation, this huge gastric dilatation filled with undigested material, and he had also focal gastric wall pressure necrosis that was found during surgery. Um, effect on the colon, um, this patient suffering from constipation, Plain abdominal radiograph shows fecal impaction of the colon. Uh, this barium enema, uh, first of all, when you first look at this barium enema, you think about which disease it resembles. Yes, actually, this is uh, correct because it shows effacement of the host cell pattern. For the first while, one thinks of inflammatory uh, bowel disease or ulcerative colitis. Uh, this is what's called cathartic colon. 
chronic use of cathartics uh, in order to reduce weight will cause effacement of the hostural pattern of the what, colon. What's cathartics? Cathartics. Ca cathartics uh, Just to explain, maybe some people who don't know. Uh, cathartics are material used to um, reduce diarrhea. Yes. Laxatives. 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 Yes. Laxatives. Okay, chronic laxatives always. They eat and they cause themselves diarrhea to mm. not gain, gain weight. weight. Yes. Okay, chronic, chronic resulting in disappearance of the colon. Uh, another effect of chronic laxative use is uh, what's called neuronosis coli, which is due to pigment deposition in the mucosa of the colon. Uh, this is neuronosis coli. Uh, neuronosis, yes. This here, it looks like thickening of the wall of the sigmoid colon mm -hmm. here. Okay, it's suspicious. Might be some sort of tumor or something. However, in surgery, yes. pathologically proven. Melanosis coli. Now, what, what, what about this thing? The pigment. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, it's uh, desirable, uh, desirable within the. Uh, Talk to us about it yes. Well. Later on, we'll talk about oh, it. Okay. Uh, another body organ system is the uh, respiratory system. Uh, patients suffer from repeated infection in addition to interstitial lung changes and enzymatic changes. Here in this patient with fever and chest pain, uh, we, sh we see that there is a cavitary uh, lung lesion involving the right nasal zone with an air fluid level. CT scan also shows this cavitary changes uh, together with consolidative changes in the surrounding lung segment. So this patient with a lung abscess uh, due to uh, perhaps for uh, aspiration due to re repeated induced repeated vomiting. Repeated vomiting yes. because aspiration, aspiration, aspiration becomes abscess. Yes. Another body organ system is the genital urinary systems. Here, especially in females, there is a suppression of the hypothalamic pituitary axis, means low levels of LH and FSH. So these uh, ladies will have small size uteri, small size ovaries, and thin endometrial stripe. Many of them suffer from oligo or amenorrhea. So that oligo and amenorrhea is one diagnostic criterion for aneroxia nervosa in postmenarchal uh, females. Uh, regarding the urinary system, uh, one. What, what is uh, uh, sorry. Yes. Uh, this is a small size uterus. Uh, okay. Small size uterus. It shows also a thin endometrial stripe. This is 26 years old. Yes, 26 years old. So according to her age, the uterus is a small. Uh, it also says that it's just like the new infantile uterus, the uh, uterus body fundus ratio is also deranged. The fundus small is body, small large body, cervix. large, large uh, cervix. And the ovaries, uh, ovaries also size very are very small. Regarding the urinary system and the kidneys, there will be deposition of crystals in the corticomedullary junction, so leading to uh, nephrolymphatosis. Uh, I think of note in this patient that he has ascites. And why does he have ascites? We are also going to discuss it a few slides later. Okay? Um, yes, the final body system to be discussed is the neurological system. Here, as we mentioned, there is a fat depletion. In the, uh, in the head, we have three areas to look for uh, fat signal intensity. First, the subcutaneous fat, this is white arrow. The black arrow is the calvarium fat intensity. And the third area is the orbital fat. So A is a normal individual. We put this picture for comparison. Mm -hmm. Three areas of fat signal intensity, subcutaneous, calvarium, and orbital fat. In this patient, there is fat depletion, so there will be loss of fat signal intensity in one of these areas in sequence. So, for example, a patient with moderate anorexia nervosa, he has loss of signal intensity of the subcutaneous and calvarian fat, but preserved orbital fat signal intensity. We can compare these two images. He has loss of subcutaneous and calvarian fat. While this patient with severe anorexia nervosa, even orbital fat uh, signal intensity is lost. So this is the last area to be uh, involved. Uh, also, these patients with uh, eating disorder, especially anorexia, will have generalized reduction in their brain volume. Um, which one is normal? I don't know. B, yes, B is normal. While A uh, presents uh, prominent gyroid, prominent median fissure, and prominent ventricular system. Yes. Uh, there are some manifestations.
manifestations of eating disorders that are not genuine. They are due to uh, poor management and uh, incorrect treatment. These patients are malnourished and they may be dehydrated. So when a dehydrated patient with eating disorder is, uh, is improperly uh, corrected with a large amount of fluids, this is what, what, uh, what will happen, what is called central contine myelinolysis. The excessive, the rapid correction of hyponatremia in this individual will result in osmotic myelinolysis to the myelin sheet of the nerves. Characteristically, this condition occurs in the central part of the basal pons at hyper, at area of hyperintensity. Uh, central contine myelinolysis. Well, we asked about why that patient developed ascites. Why that patient had ascites? We're gonna answer this in this slide. This was called feeding refeeding syndrome. As we mentioned, some uh, sequelae due to poor management. If this malnourished individual, if we give them excessive amount of food, especially in form of total parenteral nutrition, what will happen? He's malnourished individual. Uh, he has always low level of glucose and low level of insulin. When we give a flood and a gush of glucose, what will happen? Elevation of body glucose, elevation of insulin. What will happen? A shift of electrolytes intracellularly. Sodium intracellularly. What will be shifted intravascularly? Fluid. There will be a huge amount of fluid retention resulting in pleural effusion and ascites. This is why that patient, when we talk about nephrolithiasis, had ascites due to refeeding syndrome. abnormalities in this chest x-ray if yes, any abnormalities are noted. Yes, correct. Yes. This is one. Reduction of the bone density of multilevel flesh structures, hyperinflated lungs due to emphysema, and the resulting in narrow mediastinum and small size heart, and finally the loss of subcutaneous fat and loss of muscle bulk. Well, who is this character and how is she related to our topic? What's her name? Yes, Rapunzel. Entangled. Entangled. Yes, this was called Rapunzel syndrome. Um, you know, we have different images, different patients. Um, just want to um, discuss about Rapunzel syndrome. Rapunzel is a rare syndrome occur in patients with psychiatric disorders, especially trichotillomania or trichophagia. These patients pulling their hair and eating it. We know that the hair is undigestible matter, so the hair fibers get entangled together forming ball, balls of desour. These balls occur in the stomach and further may migrate to the intestine, resulting in intestinal obstruction. How can I approach the patients with suspected uh, desour or Rapunzel syndrome? First is plain abdominal x-ray. Of course, diagnosis is difficult by plane. Usually, it's inconclusive. Only may demonstrate signs of intestinal obstruction. But in, many, in some patients, may reveal a dilated stomach with a mottled appearance due to presence of entrapped gas 
between the uh, hair, uh, within the bizarre. Second, what should I do if I suspect it? I need to uh, barium studies or a fluoroscopic barium studies. Again, to show an intraluminal mass with modeled appearance. Importantly, it is a mobile mass. In different barium projections, it's mobile. Otherwise, I, I can't think of a big new plastic mass filling this tunnel. The third is ultrasound. Can we diagnose by ultrasound? Maybe. If it is a small ball within a well, standard fluid filled stomach can present as a mobile mass of heterogeneous ecogenicity. If it is very large, can give an arc like hyperechoic surface with intense uh, shadowing, intense posterior shadowing. This is uh, ultrasound of the stomach. Of course, the best modality for diagnosis are CT or MRI reveal uh, the dilated stomach with a uh, mass, heterogeneous mass. Uh, with the mottled gas pattern. The mottled gas pattern appearance is important for diagnosis. Um, this was uh, the Ponzo syndrome and as I mentioned, the different diagnostic approaches. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, any questions?